It's the 100th Lesson Math Marvels. Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn about circle graphs. I'm really excited about this one. So as I'm modeling, look out for how I accurately analyze the circle graphs from the data, how I can represent ratios from fractions from that data, and how I determine the percentages from the information on the graph. And finally, we'll learn how to create our own circle graphs using benchmark values. Elizabeth tracked how much time she spent on homework over the course of a week. Use the pie chart to answer the question. What can you conclude based on the chart? I love pie charts. I love that they represent parts of whole relationships. They have to do with angles. There's so much data here and it just connects geometry, ratios, percentages, angles. Love them so much. So let's look at this first part. What can we conclude? If Elizabeth spent 340 minutes on homework, how many minutes did she spend doing her history homework? So what do we know? Here we can see that she spent 34% of her homework time just on history. So I am going to make a math table to represent that percentage. And we're going to put in our 34% out of 100. And this is just history. And we know that she spent 340 minutes on homework. So again, this is a part to whole relationship. So 340 doesn't represent the part. It represents all the time on her homework. So what do we know about the number of minutes for her history homework? Okay. So now that we have this, oh God, we even get EE questions in here. We're going to cross multiply and we get 100 N is equal to 34 times 340. We have our calculator here and that is equal to 11,560. So 100 times a number is equal to this big number. Let's divide by 100 to isolate our variable. We just get an N. 11560 divided by 100, there you go, is equal to 115.6. Minutes. So that's how much time she spends on her history homework. Now, what else can we see or notice from the pie chart? One thing we can definitely see how many subjects she studied. So history, bio, art, band, health, and Spanish. So we can see that. And the great thing about pie charts is you can see which is the biggest piece of the pie. And in this case, history was the biggest piece of the pie. And everything else is in there. So knowing that, was there anything else? So we can also just come up with lots of different relationships. I can see that about half the time was spent on just history and Spanish. And the rest of it was on the other topics. I can kind of, and you, I think about fractions a lot with circles. So this part over here is about 25% of the time. And you could also just add these two together, the percentages. So you can see from here to here, this was 29%, very close. Um, at the time was just bio and art. What was the smallest amount? Band. She spent the least amount of time working on her instrument. But again, this is why I love pie charts and circle charts. They just connect all the things we've worked on for the entire sixth grade, every single domain. But hit pause and jot this down into your notes because I can't wait to get to the next problem. Now we're going to try drawing a pie chart. And so the tough part with this is 
Let's think about parts with circles. Uh, we're going to have to use some of our fraction knowledge and it might not be perfect and that's okay. So we're going to need to know the percentages for each of these numbers. Let's look at the problem. Rashid conducted a survey at school. He asked each student to name one favorite season of the year. The results of Rashid's survey are shown in this chart. Create a circle chart of his data. Okay, so we can see for spring, we can see all of them here. Spring, summer, fall, winter, so all four, and we see all of his answers in the number of students. The first thing we are definitely gonna need is a total. We need to know how many in all so we can find the percentages. So let's add them up. We have 120 plus 180 is 300, plus 150 is 450, plus another 150. So we have 600 in all. Awesome. Let's represent all of these as fractions and turn the fractions into percents. So for spring, we have 120 out of 600. I'm gonna give some choice here. We could either, here's choice one. We can turn this into a decimal and then to a percent, or you can use a ratio table to find a percentage. I kind of just want to turn this to a decimal and a percent. So let's do that. We'll do 120 divided by 600. And that is 0.20 or 20%. We'll do the same thing with summer. Summer is 180 out of 600. So it is a larger one. 180 out of 600. So it's 0.3 or 30%. That's our highest number. And fall and winter are the same. 150 out of 600. There we go. And that is 0.25 or 25%. And fall and winter had the same 150 and 150. So here's 25% and here's 25%. Now, just checking to make sure all our percentages make 100. So this is 50% and this is 50%. Awesome. We're gonna think about our fraction part. So how do I write down 25% of this circle? Well, I know that that would be like this from the center. So if I could make that little right angle, that would make 25% because in my head, it would be cutting this in half and cutting it in half again would make quarters. So this would represent, here's winter, 25%. And I'm gonna do the same thing For fall, which is also 25%. Now here's the toughy part, spring and summer. So spring is 20% and summer is 30%. Together, they make this part. So here's a, the thing that I can do. I can either think about this, what if we broke this up into little pieces? So here's 25%. So I know that has to be a little less. So I'm gonna estimate 20% will be about here. Okay, so I'm making an estimate. This would be, from top to bottom, would be 25%, so I'm gonna go a little bit smaller. And this is my estimate for spring. And the rest would be summer. 30%. So that's it. That's all I did in order to make my, my circle chart. I just used what I knew about fractions and I made estimates. So I will tell you the easiest ways to think about circle charts. What I like to think about here, I'm going to make a quick circle and another 
Okay, there you go. So the easiest thing is to think about your baseline. So I put a little center in the middle. I like to cut in half. So you can think of halves. Halves and fourths really work very, very well. And for thirds, I kind of go to the center. And I try to do this for, for thirds. And they're not always perfect, but this will really help. The great thing about halves is if you can make halves, you can very easily make fourths by cutting in half again, or you can try and make three out of six. So what I mean is I can cut this in half to make fourths. I can cut this into three pieces to make sixes. Um, so that can really, really help with some of the easier numbers. The same thing if I have fourths, I can cut very easily to make eighths. So if you cut it in half again, you have eights. Or if you need twelfths, you can cut each one into three pieces. So you can do different things, but we're gonna try not making it too complicated. But definitely use these as your benchmarks for your halves, your quarters, your thirds. So you can hit pause and try practicing with this circle graph. And I will see you in the next lesson. Be well.